The streets tell a story. Tents line the sidewalks. People huddle under blankets. This is the face of homelessness in America. It's a crisis that's growing worse. Record numbers of people are without a place to call home. But it's not just about those without shelter. The cost of housing is skyrocketing. Rent is soaring to unaffordable levels. Families are being priced out of their homes. This is the reality for millions of Americans. The middle class is being squeezed from all sides. The American dream is slipping out of reach. It's a perfect storm of economic challenges. And it's time we talked about it. Imagine working hard all your life, playing by the rules. You have a decent job, maybe even a family, but you're barely scraping by. The cost of everything is going up. Groceries are more expensive. Filling up your gas tank feels like a luxury. Even basic necessities like utilities are putting a strain on your budget. You're working harder but falling further behind. Your paycheck doesn't stretch as far as it used to. The rising cost of living is eating away at your dreams. The stress is constant. The worry never goes away. You're trapped in a cycle of debt and despair. You're doing everything right, but it feels like you're getting nowhere. It's like you're running on a treadmill and the speed keeps increasing. The bills keep piling up and there's no end in sight. It's exhausting and it's demoralizing. This is the reality for America's middle class. They are the backbone of our country. They are the teachers, the nurses, the small business owners. They are the ones who keep our communities running. But they are struggling to survive. The system is failing them. The American dream is becoming a distant memory. It's time for a change. We need to address the root causes of this crisis. Uh, we need to find solutions that work for everyone. The future of our country depends on it. We can't keep ignoring this problem. We need to come together and find real solutions. It's not just about policy changes. It's about understanding and empathy. We need to support each other and lift each other up. Think about the most basic human need shelter. Now, imagine not having it. This is the harsh reality for over 650,000 Americans on any given night. That's right, over half a million people experiencing homelessness, families with children, veterans who served our country, people just like you and me. The numbers are staggering and they're only getting worse. In some cities, it's hard to walk a block without seeing someone living on the streets. It's a crisis that's touching every corner of America. What's even more alarming is that this isn't just about a lack of housing units. It's about a lack of affordable housing. People are working full-time jobs, sometimes multiple jobs, and still can't afford a place to live. Rent has become a dirty word for many Americans. It's the biggest chunk of their income, often eating up more than half of their take-home pay. Imagine this. You get your paycheck, and before you even buy groceries or pay your bills, half of it is already gone, straight to your landlord. This is the reality for millions of families struggling to keep a roof over their heads. And it's not just happening in big, expensive cities. Even in smaller towns and rural areas, rent is skyrocketing. The competition for affordable housing is fierce. People are forced to make impossible choices. Do they pay rent or put food on the table? Do they pay for their medication or keep a roof over their heads? The consequences of this housing crisis are devastating. Families are being priced out of their homes, forced to move further away from their jobs, schools, and support systems. The American dream of owning a home is becoming increasingly unattainable for many. The cost of buying a house is out of reach for a growing number of people, especially young adults just starting out. This crisis is affecting our communities in profound ways. It's leading to increased poverty, homelessness, and a widening gap between the haves and the have-nots. It's time for our leaders to recognize the urgency of this issue and take action. We need real solutions to address the root causes of this crisis. The good news is that there are solutions to the housing crisis. We need to build more affordable housing, plain and simple. That means investing in government programs that create incentives for developers to build housing that is accessible to low- and middle-income families. It also means revisiting zoning laws that often restrict the development of affordable housing in desirable neighborhoods. We need to make sure that everyone has a safe, affordable place to call home. It's not just about putting a roof over people's heads. It's about creating a foundation for a better future. It's time to build our way out of this crisis and ensure that the American dream remains within reach for all. The Grocery Gauntlet Walking into a grocery store shouldn't feel like a high-stakes game. But for many Americans, that's exactly what it's become. Prices on everyday essentials are going through the roof. 
Remember when a gallon of milk was under $3? Those days seem like a distant memory. Meat, eggs, produce, everything is getting more expensive. It's not just a few cents here and there. We're talking about significant increases that are making it harder and harder to put food on the table. Families are having to make tough choices. Do they buy the cheaper, less healthy options? Do they skip meals altogether? This isn't about being frugal. It's about basic survival, beyond the checkout line. And it's not just groceries that are putting a strain on our wallets. Turn on the lights, take a shower, drive to work. These everyday activities are costing us more than ever before. Utility bills are climbing. Gas prices are unpredictable. Insurance premiums are skyrocketing. It feels like every time we turn around, there's another expense eating away at our paychecks. For many families, it's a constant game of catch-up. They're one unexpected expense away from financial disaster. The middle class is being squeezed from all sides and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. The vanishing raise. You finally got that raise. But wait a minute. Why doesn't it feel like you have any more money? That's because inflation is silently robbing us of our hard-earned wages. Sure, your paycheck might be bigger, but your money isn't going as far. It's like running on a treadmill. You're working harder than ever, but you're not making any real progress. The purchasing power of the average American worker has been steadily declining. We're working more, but we can afford less. It's a recipe for frustration and despair. The cost of living crisis is a complex issue with no easy solutions. But one thing is clear. We can't just sit back and accept this as the new normal. We need our leaders to address the root causes of this crisis. We need policies that prioritize working families, not just the wealthy and powerful. The American dream is at stake. We need to fight for a future where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, not just survive. The news seems promising. The unemployment rate is at a record low. Millions of jobs are being added every month. It sounds like a great time to be looking for work, right? But behind the rosy statistics lies a different reality. For many job seekers, finding a decent job feels like an uphill battle. You send out dozens, even hundreds of applications. You tailor your resume, write cover letter after cover letter, and spend hours filling out online forms. But the responses are few and far between. It's enough to make you wonder, are those help wanted signs just for show? Welcome to the black hole of online job applications. You hit submit and then nothing. Days, sometimes weeks go by with no response. You check your inbox obsessively, hoping for an email, a phone call, anything. The silence is deafening. You start to doubt yourself. Was my resume not good enough? Did I say the wrong thing in my cover letter? The self-doubt creeps in, chipping away at your confidence. This is the reality for millions of job seekers. They're stuck in application limbo, with no idea if their applications are even being seen by human eyes. The ghosting game. And then, there's the dreaded ghosting. You finally get a call, maybe even an interview. Things seem promising. You're excited about the opportunity. But then, radio silence. You never hear back from the company. No rejection email, no explanation. Just gone. It's not just rude, it's demoralizing. You're left wondering what went wrong what you could have done differently. This ghosting phenomenon is becoming increasingly common in the hiring process, leaving job seekers feeling frustrated and disrespected. A shrinking workforce. So, what's behind this employment paradox? Part of the answer lies in a shrinking workforce. Baby boomers are retiring, and there aren't enough younger workers to fill their shoes. Companies are struggling to find qualified candidates, but they're also hesitant to offer competitive salaries and benefits. This creates a situation where there are jobs available, but they're not necessarily good jobs. And even if you're qualified, the hiring process itself can feel like an insurmountable obstacle course. The result, a workforce that's both desperate and disillusioned. The other side of the rent check. Um, it's easy to paint landlords as the villains in the housing crisis, but the reality is far more nuanced. Being a landlord isn't just about collecting rent checks, it's a business. And like any business, it comes with its own set of challenges and rising costs. For starters, landlords are facing the same inflationary pressures as everyone else. Their expenses are going up, from property taxes and insurance premiums to the cost of maintenance and repairs. When the roof leaks or the furnace breaks down, it's the landlord who's responsible for fixing it. And those repairs aren't getting any cheaper. 
the cost of materials and labor has skyrocketed in recent years, cutting into landlords' profits and making it harder to make ends meet. While large corporations might own thousands of rental units, many landlords are just everyday people trying to make a living. They might own a couple of properties or renting them out to supplement their income or save for retirement. These small-time landlords are feeling the squeeze more than ever. They don't have the deep pockets of large corporations to absorb rising costs. For them, raising rents isn't a matter of greed, it's a matter of survival. They're caught between a rock and a hard place, trying to balance their own financial well-being with the needs of their tenants. Many are being forced to sell their properties, further shrinking the availability of affordable housing. It's important to remember that the landlord-tenant relationship is a two-way street. Both parties have a role to play in creating a fair and sustainable housing market. Landlords deserve to be compensated fairly for their investments and the services they provide. Tenants, on the other hand, deserve safe, affordable housing. Finding the right balance is crucial. It requires open communication, empathy, and a willingness to work together. Ultimately, we need to move beyond the blame game and focus on solutions that address the needs of both landlords and tenants. Imagine a seesaw constantly trying to find its balance. On one side, you have inflation, prices soaring like a rocket. On the other side, you have economic growth, the engine that drives our prosperity. The Federal Reserve, or the Fed for short, is like the kid in the middle, trying to keep everything steady. Their main tool, interest rates. Think of interest rates like the price of borrowing money. When the Fed raises interest rates, it becomes more expensive to borrow money for things like homes, cars, and business loans. The idea is to slow down the economy a bit, cool things off, and hopefully bring inflation under control. But finding the right balance is tricky. Housing policy is like a giant Jenga tower, with each block representing a different program or regulation. The problem is, the tower is wobbly, and some of the blocks are missing. One of the biggest challenges is the lack of affordable housing. We're simply not building enough homes that people can actually afford. Zoning laws, which dictate what can be built where, often make it difficult to build affordable housing in desirable neighborhoods. This creates segregation and limits opportunities for families. Then there's the issue of funding. Government programs that support affordable housing are often underfunded and oversubscribed, leaving many families without the help they need. The result is a housing market that's failing to meet the needs of millions of Americans. Imagine a safety net designed to catch those who fall on hard times. But this safety net is full of holes, and many people are slipping through the cracks. Social safety net programs like food stamps, unemployment insurance, and Medicaid are designed to provide a lifeline for those struggling to make ends meet. However, these programs are often inadequate, with strict eligibility requirements and limited benefits. Many working families earn too much to qualify for assistance but not enough to make ends meet. They're stuck in a no-man's land, unable to get ahead and constantly at risk of falling behind. The debate over the adequacy of these programs is ongoing, with some arguing for expansion and others calling for cuts. The issue of economic inequality and the struggles of the middle class has become a political battleground. Politicians on both sides of the aisle claim to have the solutions, but finding common ground is often elusive. Some argue for tax cuts for the wealthy, trickle-down economics, and deregulation as the path to prosperity. Others advocate for raising the minimum wage, strengthening unions, and investing in social programs. The outcome of elections has a significant impact on the policies that are enacted, which in turn directly affect the lives of millions of Americans. The question is, what kind of future do we want to create? One where everyone has the opportunity to succeed, or one where the gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen? Remember the American dream, that idea that if you work hard and play by the rules, you can achieve success and a better life for yourself and your children. It's a promise that's been at the heart of America for generations. But for many Americans today, that dream feels increasingly out of reach. The middle class, once the bedrock of our society, is being squeezed from all sides. The rising cost of living, stagnant wages, and the housing crisis are making it harder than ever to get ahead. Families are struggling to keep up, let alone get ahead. The dream of home ownership, once a cornerstone of middle class life, is slipping away for many. 
Young people are delaying milestones like marriage and starting families because they simply can't afford it. As the middle class struggles, the gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen. The top 1% of earners are accumulating more wealth than ever before, while the rest of us are left fighting over the scraps. This growing inequality is not just a moral issue, it's an economic one. When a small percentage of the population holds the vast majority of the wealth, it creates an imbalance that hurts everyone. It stifles economic growth, undermines social mobility, and fuels political polarization. We become a nation divided, not by ideology or beliefs, but by economic circumstance. This division erodes our sense of shared purpose and makes it harder to address the challenges we face as a nation. America has always prided itself on being a land of opportunity, where anyone can climb the economic ladder with hard work and determination. But for many Americans today, that ladder feels like it's missing rungs. The rising cost of education, coupled with stagnant wages, makes it harder for young people to get ahead. They're graduating with mountains of debt and entering a job market that often doesn't value their skills. This lack of economic mobility has far-reaching consequences. It creates a cycle of poverty and limits opportunities for future generations. It also undermines the American dream itself, as children are less likely to do better than their parents. The long-term implications of the squeeze on America's middle class are dire. We face a future of growing inequality, diminished opportunity, and social unrest if we fail to act. This is not the time for complacency or partisan bickering. We need leaders who are willing to address these challenges with bold solutions and a commitment to the common good. We need to invest in education, create good-paying jobs, make housing more affordable, and strengthen the social safety net. The future of our country, our economy, and our democracy depends on it. Let's choose to build a nation where everyone has the chance to thrive, not just survive. Imagine a bridge connecting people to affordable homes. That's what we need to create, a pathway to housing security for all Americans. Um, one way to build this bridge is to increase the supply of affordable housing. We need to encourage developers to build more homes that everyday people can afford. We can also explore rent control measures to prevent rent from skyrocketing out of control. This can provide much needed relief for renters struggling to keep up with rising costs. Another important step is to make home ownership more attainable. Programs that provide down payment assistance or tax breaks for first-time home buyers can help make the dream of home ownership a reality for more Americans. The rules of our economy seem rigged against the middle class. It's time to rewrite those rules to create a fairer system for everyone. One way to do this is to address the issue of stagnant wages, raising the minimum wage, strengthening unions and promoting policies that encourage businesses to share profits with their workers can help boost incomes for working families. We also need to tackle the rising cost of health care, education, and child care. Making these essential services more affordable would free up more income for families to save and invest in their futures. Finally, we need to rethink our tax system. A fairer tax code would require the wealthiest Americans and corporations to pay their fair share, ensuring that everyone contributes to the common good. Imagine a safety net, strong and reliable, catching those who fall on hard times. That's the kind of social safety net we need to create, one that provides a genuine lifeline for those in need. We need to expand access to affordable health care, ensuring that everyone has access to quality medical care without going bankrupt. Strengthening unemployment insurance programs can provide a critical buffer for workers who lose their jobs through no fault of their own. We should also invest in job training and retraining programs to help workers adapt to the changing demands of the 21st century economy. This will equip them with the tools they need to succeed in the workforce of tomorrow. The challenges facing America's middle class are significant, but they are not insurmountable. The power to create change rests in the hands of the people. We need to demand better from our elected officials, holding them accountable for policies that prioritize the needs of working families. Every vote, every phone call, every email to our representatives makes a difference. We can also support organizations and initiatives working to address these issues at the local, state, and national levels. The future of our country depends on our willingness to come together, raise our voices, and fight for a more just and equitable society. Let's choose to build a nation where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, not just survive.
We've journeyed through a landscape of economic uncertainty, a terrain where the American dream seems to be fading for many. The streets, once symbols of prosperity, now echo with the struggles of those facing homelessness. The aisles of grocery stores, once filled with abundance, now reflect tough choices and shrinking budgets. The joy of a hard-earned raise is overshadowed by the reality of inflation, a silent thief stealing our purchasing power. The promise of a good job, once a guarantee of a stable life, now feels like a distant hope for many. The application process, a maze of online forms and unanswered emails, leaves many feeling lost and defeated. This is the unraveling of the American middle class, a slow and steady erosion of the foundation upon which our nation was built. We stand at a crossroads. One path leads to a future where the gap between the haves and the have-nots continues to widen, where the American dream becomes an exclusive club reserved for the privileged few. The other path, though more challenging, offers a glimmer of hope. It's a path paved with empathy, where we recognize that the struggles of one affect us all. It's a path that demands action, not just words. It requires us to confront the systemic issues that have created this crisis. The lack of affordable housing, the stagnation of wages, the rising cost of living, and the erosion of the social safety net. It demands that we hold our elected officials accountable, urging them to enact policies that prioritize the needs of everyday Americans, not just the wealthy and powerful. The American dream is not dead. It's been tarnished, yes, but it's not beyond repair. It's a dream that's always been fueled by the collective spirit of its people, by our willingness to fight for a better tomorrow. We must rediscover that spirit, that sense of shared purpose. We must demand an economy that works for everyone, not just a select few. We must invest in our communities, our schools, our infrastructure, and most importantly, in each other. The time for complacency is over. The time for action is now. Let's raise our voices, join hands, and reclaim the promise of a nation where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, not just survive. Let's rebuild the middle class, brick by brick, dream by dream, until the American dream is once again within reach for